life for some of us. Some of us, is, even under the ego, has strove so diligently um, on the for the path of righteousness. I'm done with the invites. Anybody ain't get invited, they don't need to be invited at this point. But anybody, I mean, some of us, even with this ego thing that kept us in the slumber state of ignorance, even with that, was still striving so hard to be righteous that when their ego leave, they're going to be amazed that they even had one. They're not going to even know they had one because they found <clears throat> that they strengthening their egos with righteousness. So they got an ego, but it's a righteous ego because it, that, these are what you call the ones with the golden heart. And, you know, so my goddaughter, I, I placed a piece of gold in her heart so that, you know, she can grow and flourish and be something greater than what she would have been without it. Because a lot of us don't have the right to uh, ascend, but then there's some of us that got the right to ascend, but we only have a certain amount of uh, that stuff in us, I could say it like that. That stuff. <laughs> they call it the it factor. Well, that can be turned up through practice and um, determination. You can turn up that it factor, that intangible aspect of the self that makes you shine brighter than the next person next to you that might even be your twin. But some of us, most of us don't know we can turn up the it factor with practice, discipline, and determination. So you see every now and then you have a Michael Jackson come along followed by a Prince. Then you have a, a Michael Jordan come along then he's followed by a Kobe or a LeBron. You know, they are cultivating the it factor. They cultivate it. They cultivate it with practice, discipline, and determination to succeed. Failure is not an option. It's not even on the drawing board. Only time failure is considered is as a tool to advance to the next level. That's the only consideration for failure. What purpose does it serve if it's not going to serve your advantage? Then you don't need to even fail. So all failures must be used as another step in the direction of the overall goal. So I think I'm in deep enough to talk about the lady with the black skirt. So... This morning during the witching hour, I was meditating and I seen a lady coming up to me. I was driving in the car and I was kind of odd because mostly I don't drive in cars in uh, my visions. So that was a red flag to me. I'm driving in a car in a vision. Not a dream, but a vision. I don't drive in cars in visions. So that tells me whatever this vision is got to be related to a car. Got to be. Because I don't drive in cars and visions. But now I'm driving in the car and I'm coming across a uh, parking lot. And I see this gorgeous lady coming up. And she got a tank top and a black skirt. I was intending to pass her by. I was intending to not speak to her in the vision. But as I rolled past and I got a little bit past her, I thought she said something. that stuck my head out the window. And she started talking to me and she was telling me, hey, I got this key for you here. And she came and gave me a key. So, what the fuck is this shit? So now, a lady in a black skirt in the vision bringing me a key. This just tells me that either two things is about to happen. Um, either uh, Mary Bear is going to announce something today um, spontaneously related to the UAW struggle or literally a woman in a black or a white skirt gonna bring me a key for something today. I don't know what the fuck it is, nor do I really care at this point, because I didn't already did my part. I don't have to wait on nobody. Um, I don't even have to help nobody else at this point. But I had to do the video because I have to mention it before it happened so that the people can see that it's not haphazard. Now, I don't know what it means, because it could come in a picture. It could come as a text. It could come as an email. It can come as a Facebook post. But when I find it, I'm going to let everybody know what the situation was because it's got me perplexed right now. 
because I can't put all of the pieces together. That means that there's something that I'm missing. But whatever I'm missing, I'm going to get it by the time whatever the sign was telling me um, is to be revealed to me. Um, I'll see it clearly. But I'm missing something at this point. But between now, hey, Dominic, uh, between now and the sign, right? I don't know what I'm missing because I can't put it all together and make it make sense to me. I can't match it with three points of convergence. Yeah, Joe, it could be a door opening. It could be a door opening, but the only reason I don't think it was a door opening because if that was the case, I would have probably opened the car door. This is just the key. The door might not open for two more days or three days or seven days whatever case may be but today something happens with the key related to a woman in the black skirt now remember when you're looking at the vision it's the same but different so the skirt could be the same skirt a mini skirt with a tank top on but it don't have necessarily have to be black it can be gray or white the same but different exactly the opposite is the white the gray is the same but different somewhere in the middle and then you have the woman with the tank top on. Now, she could have a tank top on or she could have a T-shirt on. Because they're both undershirts. They can be the same but different. Um, her hair color changed twice in there. When I first seen her, her hair was blind. When, I, when she started talking to me, her hair was brunette. Which could indicate two women or the mirror effect. So, uh, at this particular point, Near my area, <clears throat> I've been trying to get the UAW people to uh, inform the sheriffs that they're supposed to protect the inalienable right of assembly. And we've been seeing in this area only that, um, like in Flint, um, Portia posted on my page yesterday, in Flint, unionized law enforcement brought pizza to Flint workers that were striking. And... Um, um, they started off assholes at 5960, but then they started to bag up. Um, I don't know what's going on today. I'm not really too interested. I'm not really, my basically my give a fuck meter not really moving, but I'm, um, I'm just doing my part. Because no matter how I like it or don't like it, as long as I follow the steps, success is guaranteed. As long as I do what I'm supposed to do, every step of the way, then I can't fail. It's not possible. And I'm going to do all my shit. I can't guarantee you that everybody else is going to do theirs. I didn't did everything I had to do at this point. Everything that has, comes up now is on the fly. It's what you call um, averting catastrophe. When you avert a catastrophe, yeah, that means that this didn't happen like it's supposed to. So now we got to do this to keep this from happening. Well... Bad news is if we don't start making some major monkey moves, meaning mental monkey moves, psycho mile moves, mental moves, mind moves, the convergence of us as a as a pack of people, a human clan, a tribe, a clique. If we don't do that, the blood games begin tonight. Tonight is a Freer's Day or Friday. This is the night where in the United States, all of the regular people that work all week, they go let their hair down at the bar. Somebody going to die tonight. Tell that nigga to duck. If y'all telling somebody don't go out to the clubs and shit tonight, they want to go on his way out the door. When he say, I'm still going, say, don't fucking forget to duck. Because if these auto workers don't start being made whole, the frenzy created by people constantly calling the police is going to activate the sleeper cell. I can't stress this enough. Hey, there go my Porsche. Chaos Queen. So, I can't express, express it enough. It don't have nothing to do with the person that's going to actually do the killing. He, ain't even know, he don't even know he's going to do it. He the same amount of innocent as the person watching now if you was holding a gun in your hand and you didn't even know it. All of a sudden, somebody was dead, and they told you you did it. What? And you was you didn't know you did it. This is the condition in the mental state that they're gonna be in. 
Um, you all remember the uh, school shootings. Every fucking kid that did one of those major school shootings was a Manchurian candidate under the treatment of a psychiatrist. Don't believe me. Go check it out. But at this point, if you still don't know that I know what the fuck I'm talking about, you in trouble. Not that I'm, I don't, I don't care about, I told you so shit. That's the worst thing. I hate to tell a motherfucker, I told you so. Or, that's the worst shit I hate. I, I've, I'm so sick of telling people that shit. Yeah, I know I'm fucking right. I wouldn't have said it. I'm going to calculate my, my words. I'm not going to just say shit because it sounds pretty or it's another motherfucker want to hear. Fuck your feelings. I love you to death, but fuck your feelings. Your feelings is in the way. That's your ego. That shit ain't going to even be here. Fuck your feelings. Stab that shit yourself. Kill that shit. The emotional um, ego is an anchor to the fifth dimension. People get caught up in their likes and their dislikes. That's what's going to hold them here. I don't like white people. I don't like Democrats. I don't like gay people. Those are your anchors. Remember that. All of this shit that you don't like about other humans. Now, you got the right to not like the way broccoli tastes without it affecting your overall person. Some people just don't like the taste of broccoli because they're not of the broccoli eaters. And some people don't want to eat beef because they're not of the beef eaters. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your, <clears throat> your resentments, hatreds, animosities, aversions towards other humans. Anything that keep you from being cordial to the next person that walk past you and speak, that shit. That's what I'm talking about has to go. That has to be overcome to a sin. Most of us not going to do it because we don't even know who the enemy is. And that's where the biggest trap is. Especially y'all look like me. And y'all can't let go of the white man shit. Fuck the white man. Fuck the white man. If you do your shit, the white man becomes irrelevant. That's how come your dumb ass still a slave. You so busy worrying about what we going to do to beat the white man. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do to beat the white man. Be a goddamn man. You ain't got to be black or white. Be a fucking man. The white man die at that point. Because even if you look like this and you think like that, you a white man. The white man is the devil. Anybody that think like that is the white man. The white man is the devil. You got to pay attention. Anybody that think like that. There is no historical record of a cross-section of the human family called white man that ain't 500, 600 years old. It don't exist before that. That means that white man is a mentality. What's the mentality, white supremacy? Well, how do I know if it's me? Read W.E.B. Du Bois, Souls of Black Folks, study that chapter called The Warren Soul. He gonna tell you how to find yourself lost in the white man. You the fucking white man don't even know it. So the white man the devil, but you the white man, but you look like me. Go back and look at every struggle. Every time they got betrayed, it was a motherfucker with this shit that looked like this. But the white man is the devil, and the white man is a mentality. The white man is the devil, and it's a mentality. It's a hate, separate, divided mentality. And if you think like that, but you look like this, you still the fucking white man. In the hood, we call y'all Oreos. You look like you ain't the white man, but you the white man. You got some of them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? They cream, they cream dip chocolate now. They look like the white man, but they think like righteousness. They ain't the white man. The white man, the devil. Y'all got to remember that. And y'all got to understand how this is being explained to y'all. White man mean mentality. Right? Jane Goodall told, well, no, not Jane Goodall, that's the lady from, the other lady, I forget her name, but this other, I'm going to put the post up. But she telling y'all, there was no such thing as a white man, I think she said between, before 1463. Oh, 15 something. I got two people on there telling y'all, there's no fucking thing, such thing as a white man that's not over 500 years old. That means that even the European, that's the newcomer to the family tree, is not the white man. Who the fuck is the white man? The devil. How do you know the devil? The way he think. The shit that he do. How he act. It's a mentality. It's a white superiority mentality. An entitlement ass 
mentality. So a few months ago, when I was going through Judgment Day and I was heated about these entitled motherfuckers, this is the mentality of the white man. It's an entitlement mentality. It doesn't serve any purpose but to oppress other people. <coughs> go y'all <clears throat> that wasn't normal these motherfuckers is doing this shit I had to get off here hey if any of y'all know some protection magic y'all better get to work these motherfuckers at work I had to go I had to go I got to go get I had to go get grounded these motherfuckers are seriously scared of the are scared to death of this shit all y'all got to do is agree that's it agree to overthrow the goddamn beast all day long when you look at somebody, look them dead in the eye and say, I agree to overthrow the beast. Do you agree? Everywhere you fucking go, hack some motherfucker, do they agree? They motherfuckers attacking the shit out my ass. Everywhere you go, ask a motherfucker, is you ready to overthrow the beast? Look them in their eyes. If they turn away, they the beast. They the imposter. They don't look you bright in your eyes, they gonna tell you, yeah, let's overthrow this motherfucker. That's how you gonna know. The shit ramps up now. These motherfuckers at my... This shit feel like I got motherfuckers pouring hot acid on my ass. But I, it ain't no feel like it's on my skin. Riding bastards. I'm, gonna get, I'm finna go get all these motherfuckers. They finna get their shit. Now I get to use the shit that mama told me not to use until they use it on me. Now I get to set some shit to fuck off. Yeah, come on motherfuckers with that shit. Yeah, I gotta go, y'all. I gotta go do some damage. I get a call. My cousin Craig. My cousin Craig is a GD. And Craig gave me a bump. No, he gave me a call to the GDs, right? So he put me back to the right. But he did it with from the straight line from the cane, right? So he take the cane, he knocked me to the right, to the folks. This is my cousin Maine. Now, my cousin Maine, he was a heavy hitter. Um, and... I'm not going to go too much into that story, but he had some juice, and he had his own crew, and um, when Craig bumped me to Maine, um, we was in um, Cook County Jail, and I talked to Maine and told him what the issue was. Maine felt me out. He, uh, in the county jail, gave me $100, right? Now, Maine gave me $100. That mean, nigga, you 100. You 100%. You two balls in the cane, he gave me a whole knock. Right? He gave me a whole motherfucking, uh, a whole knock. He gave me two balls in the cane when he gave me $100. That means that as far as the folks was concerned, even if I get bumped left, I know how to come back right. Now, so, you know, the GD term is pretty much to the right. Because you got to always try to bump back right. Now, so now I got my P for my Angel Bay. Now, that's just off the day, starting. That's just what I see. I ain't even got to the full battery, meaning the full charge, right? Then we got the foe. This takes me back to my mama. That's the foe corner hustlers. That's my vice lord connection, right? So my mama was an original vice lord on the west side when they started, right? And my mama had to fight to get studs put on her jacket. And she got so many studs that didn't nobody want to fight her no more. Seven males I'm on? Okay. So, when this bumped me back to my mama line, that means now, now I'm about to get something dealing with women. With a woman. Right? But the woman is about to have me test a man. Because this is three sixes. I mean, uh, three nines. Which is three sixes upside down. Three times nine is 28. Look, six, six, six. Right? But that's also three Ps upside down. Now we bumping the ball. So this is the women calling for all three to be judged. Six, six, six. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. So that just locked all of the, that's, that's it right there. That just sealed that motherfucking deal right there. Right? But while I was in the county, now keep in mind, I'm at the vice lord level. I had a bunkie that was a four corner hustler named Kyrie.
His name was Carrie Cunningham. I'm not going to go into that. All y'all want to know, he was a four-star elite, right? And then next to him, he confirmed me as solid. He used to say, you know what, folks, you solid, though. And we used to laugh about it, right? So he gave me a 100, right? So he said, even though I swing to the left, you always bump back right. When he say, hey, folks, you solid, though. That mean even though you bump to the, to the right, when I bump you to the left, you still stay to the right. You solid. That's why he told me that. So then my neighbor, the name was Little J. Now, Little J was, uh, he was under Willie Lord, right? Now, he was in the cell next to me, and he forced me to read all his vice lord literature, 